So, welcome to my talk. And uh, this is a keynote, so I asked my colleagues uh, what uh, it should uh, contents. So here are the best advice I could come up with. So luckily, I don't represent my employer. So we can start in a normal way. And the outline today is that uh, it was about connecting communities. And it's a big, basically uh, that I still think that hackers have very conventional ways uh, to share their knowledge. And I contribute to this journal, Procor GTFO. And I think the good thing about, it's not necessarily the article or some, or a particular issue that is good or bad, but it's like we are trying to come up with new and better ways to uh, share knowledge. And of course, I encourage everyone to, uh, to try your own way too. So basically, it will start with the rent. Uh, because uh, basically to share knowledge, we have, uh, so I decided to make slides even worse than uh, Christophe. And whether we communicate, communicate with blog, academic or conference, they are, all have their drawbacks. And especially we don't really try anything new. So it's quite surprising that hackers that are supposed to be like really trying uh, outstanding things are so conventional when they share their own knowledge. So many conferences, so, uh, so such little impact. And the conferences are basically more or less all following the same model. So it's like we don't expect any impact anymore at this point. So it's a bit like, uh, why? Because we, maybe we're following the, the rules of the media. Like, uh, if you want to, if you want to, to have coverage by the medias, then you should have something shiny, an APT, something cyber. And now it's standard to have a logo, a website. So I'm asking, what's the next thing? A movie trailer. So in 10 years, the OSIS admin say, oh, I didn't patch because the trailer didn't look interesting, right? That may be standard, right? If nowadays, it's so standard to create a logo and a website. We have stickers already for some vulner uh, major vulnerabilities. I mean, not so major. So indeed, for hackers, why let med medias decide how we communicate? And uh, well, yeah, exactly, what's next? Movies and trailers. And uh, if you're doing only for exposure, so all this standardization, this non-hacker style of sharing knowledge is just the only benefit is your ego, because then that means you're, the, because that's the, the media will talk about you, what you, your stuff. So basically, is that the only reason behind it? So if you should submit to yet another conference, I think maybe not to consider it. Maybe there are better ways to share your knowledge. At least uh, try something different. So make me stop use Pink Comic Sans. Try something different. Okay, so here are a few suggestions. It's not necessarily realistic, but maybe one of them will be the standard in, 20, in 10 years. Who knows? Or maybe we'll uh, engrave uh, uh, the next issues of Poco GTA 4, the walls of a secret chamber. Who knows? And especially don't just have ideas. Ideas are useless until someone actually try them and try them fully. So don't just have ideas. Try something. So this is the end of the rant. Whew. We can stop the uh, Comic Sans now. And now, number one, Pixie. The Fenelix Exchange event, Pixie, is a small event in, uh, organized by Fenelix, so the group of FX, if you know about it. And it's, a, it's, a very, it's a, one of the best alternative things that I know that is close to a conference, but it's not like a one hour talk, only one person uh, standing, and the rest is like either bored or checking Twitter or doing their work, uh, do, well, most of you right now anyway. So if uh, I think Pixie is a very good alternative to the standard conference model, and I should encourage you to look at what how it works, or maybe try even such a thing yourself. And now, number three. International Journal of Proof of Concept, or Get the Fuck Out. So, if you're not aware, POC or GTFO is the expression for hackers to say, stop claiming something and prove it, like with the real file. And sometimes there are misunderstandings that it's not about picture of cat, and especially not about person of color, because some people are like, if you say person of color or get the fuck out, some people get offensive. So it's just to, to avoid any confusion. The central character of the of Poco GTA 4 is um, Manuel Lafroy, a fictional character that you may match to some people existing. Here is a list of the, the official list of the team who's working on it. And uh, this is what it, how, what it looks like. So we have 10 issues, 12 issues so far. Well, 13 because issue first, the first issue is issue 00. Um, with a different kind of articles, talking about different themes, 
and uh, spanning over different kind of hardwares, lots of different things. It's always available first in print at a given conference. So here is the print for the latest issue that it's uh, from uh, Recon in Montreal. So it's always scheduled at a given conference and it will be printed. So the, the advantage of that is that it gives us a real deadline, a, a really hard deadline. The printing company, I mean, it changes every time, doesn't care if you are a hacker or if you can hack anything. They just want the PDF given at some point. And this is a very good deadline because it forces us to get motivated to code some Android uh, application <laughs> at 2 a.m. on a Saturday, <laughs> the day of a wedding anniversary, for example. <laughs> it's very motivating to get us things done. And also, it's very efficient. When I meet other people and they are like, oh, I did this research, but I never took the time to finish it. Or, or I, I don't like talking and I don't like, I don't fancy uh, talking in public and everything. It's good motivation because we can help them and yet it can, uh, the hard deadline is like forcing them to get things done in a limited, I mean, they cannot avoid the, they cannot delay that any further. Another advantage the other way around is that we have one issue per quarter. So like it's regular. So if you're not finished with your article, and uh, it's almost there, or, or on the other hand, if we think it's not so good enough, we can say, oh, we'll postpone that to the next issue. Conferences are yearly events, so you always have a lot of people that say, oh, I have this awesome research, but I reserve it for that event. And then if it's not accepted for, to speak, for speaking, then what happens? The, reserve, the research is lost or they lose interest. So at least we can, it, happen, it's, it's, it uh, happens often that Either we say, okay, you have a personal problem here, we can delay it for the next issue, it's not for next year. Or on the other way, we have a submission, like, interesting, but can you elaborate? And it's also the way we reject submissions. Like, we usually suggest something a bit more, and sometimes people deliver, and sometimes they don't. But at least it's always, like, friendly, and we always stay in contact. It's not a robot uh, email saying, uh, sorry for not being accepted. It was awesome, but it was not accepted. So we don't have a smaller margin uh, of um, size of articles. That's also a very important thing uh, because sometimes you have one thing that is very nice, very interesting, but it's like, okay, it's not long enough to, to fit a full hour talk or even 20 minutes. But here we don't care. I mean, just one clever trick is enough. And if it's really like so simple, then I mean, so simple, it never, it's usually not a problem, but then we'll fit some uh, diagrams or some ads or whatever funny content we can come up with. But at least it's really not a limitation in this direction either. And it's also very good for non-mainstream content. Even though you exploited like your fridge in a funny way by opening the door 256 times, maybe that's still worth explaining. You won't go to uh, any conference with that. But if that's, if that's reality, why not? And again, some people say it's just about uh, stunt hacking, but uh, I, um, first, if, if it's a problem with you, then don't read it. If you're okay with that, then enjoy it. And uh, if uh, I always think that one person triviality is another person, uh, could be another person's solution. And whatever triviality you came up with, as long as it's clever, then it's interesting to us. So one of our, the big, the most important part is like, don't be boring. If it's, we feel that it, I mean, usually we don't have this problem, but we, if we have three pages of an article that are like bloated article of one page, then we would trim it down. But usually that doesn't happen. So, but at least we can politely reject, we can enforce the quality, and we can certainly trim down. So for example, issue 10 was cut to 88 pages. I mean, we had actually more content. Issue 11 was 40 pages. That's fine with us. I mean, the printing, it was easier, just cheaper to print. But it's not really a problem. And issue 12 is 80 pages again for no particular, I mean, we don't really control that. But if next issue was like 10 pages, as long as the content is there, remember it's a free publication and everything, so it wouldn't bother us. And usually we don't have this problem. And we don't have to reject people because like it's too big and we don't have any place anymore. That never happened yet. Who knows, but never happened yet. And especially, very important, it's really a bi-directional collaboration. It's not like you submit your stuff and uh, we do our ma editing magic and then it's done. We really can come, up ba come back and say, 
okay, can you uh, elaborate here, or uh, we cannot compile your sheet, uh, please uh, fix it, uh, or uh, can you provide us a draft, and uh, we will see that we have, uh, we really go back to the author and try to, to, to get something that is better for all of us. So, for example, there was this uh, uh, very nice project uh, that was done by four different people working together. Each of them, it, it was very nice. Each of them knew how it was, how their own path was working. Some were using Python, some were using Perl. But it was a complete mess to get all together working. And actually, no one knew how the whole thing was working. They had misunderstanding, but they just managed to make it work, and it was beautiful. But now we came as external people, they were like, wait, I don't get it. And suddenly by asking the two per person about such memory address, they were like, suddenly they are realigned. And then it was very difficult to compile. So we kind of eventually forced them to have a, like a one compiled script that works perfectly. And suddenly they could reproduce very easily. Suddenly they, come up, they could come up with even better proof of concept. Suddenly it was very easy to explain and to share. While initially it was like four separated great minds but that managed to get something working, but it was at the limit of luck. It, it was not luck, but they, they, there, there were stuff that worked and they didn't even really know how altogether it worked. So I'm not gonna name who it is, but definitely our collaboration is really bi-directional. And once we had one, uh, one uh, single make file to, to, to create everything and everything went in place, then it was, a very nice article and a very nice proof of concept for them, even for themselves. So for the audience, it's much better because if they had, if the way they were initially, they would create a four, uh, they would create a presentation. It would have felt like four different people speaking four different language, and in the end, it gets something on the screen. So much better that way. So. Especially, don't submit and forget if you think like just, okay, I submitted to Poker GTF, it has been accepted, uh, ciao, I'm going on holidays. I'd say then we really don't need us, maybe it's not required. And after all, you have your own blog for that, right? So uh, I usually it's really, we, we even enforce to have reaction so that people can come up with something even better than in the initially planned. So we edit, we push the people to get better content, and we contribute. So I'll show some parts of contribution. But it's not like we are just saying, this is not good enough, and just we wait. And the, re the, good, the good result is that when both sides are interested in getting a better article, then everybody wins from up both sides, and then the result is much better for the audience. We also provide some drawings. Some are, fun some are funny and some are serious. Uh, typically, we are provided, somehow hackers are able to provide the worst pictures ever, like bad lighting, blurry, grainy, bad angle, scratches, falls, everything. And if, even if you had a very high res picture, then it would either blow the PDF, or if it was a low res picture, then it would be uh, ugly to, to read, right? To, to read. So the best thing to, in this case is to actually create your own uh, optimal vector version of it, so that it's clear. It's very lightweight to print, to render, and, it's a, and it gives even something better for the original author, better than his original ugly picture. Uh, and we always try to make, uh, to keep uh, text um, selectable and searchable. Uh, we are sometimes, often we are given uh, diagrams of some nature, but they are given on drafts, on a napkin, on a tablet, in a shaky bus. So when you have the person sending you a tweet with a picture and saying, sorry, I can, cannot focus anymore because the bus is too shaky, you can imagine the drawing that came up out of that. But luckily, you will not see such a drawing in the issue because we try to distinguish what was and tend to come up with a nice drawing that will be useful for everyone, including the author himself, compared to his bus drawing skills. Uh, most of the time, we also uh, include uh, snippets from our official documentation, specifications, and so on. And uh, we don't do uh, screenshots, but we include the direct PDF content so that the vector content is kept perfectly. But very often, the official specifications PDF are broken in some way, so you cannot copy-paste or the font is broken, or sometimes there are even errors. So we fix the official documentation, and we include our fix in the official documentation, of course, in, in, our, doc, in our version, of course. So uh, here are a few examples of things we manipulated ourselves to align them and present them better than 
in their original documentation. We also just for fun, but sometimes it's nice, uh, implement uh, either for jokes or for serious explanations, JavaScript animations. Sadly, they are only available under Adobe Reader and Chrome, if I remember correctly. We also provide some illustrations. So here, Phil did a very nice uh, um, picture of a medieval analysis of a Tamagotchi board and a homage to Michael Osman. If you, if you know the video game, you probably see why, where it comes from. We also provide old style ads on new styles, on new stuff. So Andrea will actually present right after on the USB armory. The, now you can call it the MacGyver armory. You can rename it him from now on. And we also, so we, we sometimes take the time to create some uh, old style looking ads of modern hacker stuff. Also some homages to some important hackers in the community. We also have sermons. Um, when we, where we, some, uh, the pastor or our readers explain the things that we value as important in the hacker community. We even embed some puzzles. So here on the Tamagotchi, this is an actual shell code to be decoded. And we have one of our readers actually decoded it. And the one on the right is actually interesting because it was originally, uh, so it was an old bar core style uh, that was originally uh, used uh, long ago. And it was published as a puzzle in the issue. And then Phil actually uh, went through the fun of dealing completely CTF style uh, about the, the puzzle. And then created a script to deal with it on GitHub. And then the whole knowledge about this kind of barcode was preserved. So. From a, challenge, from a challenge as a puzzle in our magazine, then the solution by one of the reader on GitHub, and then benefits everyone to preserve all the content. And now it's on uh, the, the whole preserved content is on archive.org. So if you have uh, the writings of your grandma, maybe we can try and ask the readers to dec dec decipher it, or Christoph next speech, who knows. <laughs> Uh, we also have a centerfold. Uh, um, so when you want to, pr uh, actually plan to, pr to do, do this more of this. So in the middle of the issue, a big, um, a big diagram of some sort. If you uh, have some ideas, or I mean, I actually want to create a, a lot more about this. I think it's nice to also provide the readers with some interesting document for everyone. This was related to a very important uh, article in issue ten, I think. We also have some poetry, and I love the ode to OCB, to ECB. So some hackers-oriented poetry, of course, because why not? It shouldn't be boring, and I think it's great. An ode to ECB is good for any crypto fan, even uh, especially when it's done with all the rules of correct poetry. Uh, we also have uh, one of uh, the uh, Evan is in the team is also very good with the uh, ticks. So this is entirely, so this is a code wheel, but it's entirely done in ticks. So he has amazing skill when it's time to create very advanced diagrams and it's fully reusable. So it's actually, uh, Philip can explain it sir, to, to, for the radio frequent, uh, the power in radio. But it's in Russian this time. But I mean, it's for, if you're in ham radio, that's actually useful. It's not just funny to, to look at, but I'm not, I don't understand this. Do you notice anything with these three articles? Let me help you. If you zoom enough, then you have uh, pictures or uh, the drawings, or even you have complete lists to extend the article. So, because why not? If you want to store some hidden message in your next uh, report, we can help you. It's actually very easy to do. <coughs> And of course, it's not just a fancy document, because otherwise you would say you should present that at a printing conference and not in a, or a publication conference and not in a hacker conference. But if you know me, you probably know what to expect. So the electronic release always comes a few days after the print. So first it's a paper publication. And then uh, the, after fixing a few typos usually and uh, dealing with the QA that we'll see next, we, uh, uh, how do you say? We, the electronic release is, is out after once it goes through our QA. 
So we don't have any official website. We have some very fancy mirrors. Maybe you know that in the previous issues, we would include the in the in the past we would include the previous issues in the current issues, but we don't do that anymore because otherwise it would be too big. You can also read it directly online on archive.org, which has a very good uh, uh, PDF viewer, so online PDF viewer. So that's probably the safest way to view it, to read it electronically. If you're paranoid about that. So first, each issue has attached uh, files of any kind. So it's uh, the, we call them filies. So it's basically a PDF and a zip polyglot. So the file is a valid PDF that you can view, but it's also a zip. And you can extract all the attachments that we felt were relevant to the articles or sometimes just to the community in general. Um, something I started recently is that whenever there, there was an interesting blog a post uh, some on, on, the web, on the web or that is interesting for the community, I tried to convert them to a PDF. I mean, with all the images and everything and with all the val uh, interesting part and to clean, it, to clean it up the same way we do for the issue so that some articles are not just uh, bound to a particular blo uh, a blog host and then they disappear suddenly. And each issue is a proof of concept itself. So uh, each issue is a polyglot. So the issue, what was it? Issue two was um, bootable. So it was MBR. Issue two, issue three was a valid JPEG. It was a radio message. And if you use AES on the issue, it encrypts as a PNG. Issue five was a true, valid TrueCrypt uh, volume. So it's the same file is a, once again, PDF and zip and TrueCrypt. Issue six was ISO and flash. No, issue five was ISO and flash. Issue six was a valid tar. Issue seven was using the very recent uh, BPG format, so the new uh, image format by uh, Fabrice Bellar. No one had created such a crazy BPG before, so uh, by doing so, I failed the viewer. I failed his own engine, and he had to bug fix it. I mean, it's. It makes sense, but he was actually happy that we provide some uh, feedback. The next issue was a valid uh, audio file. So one of the poems uh, that you see earlier was actually the lyrics of a song. And the issue was a PDF showing the lyrics and a recording of the person singing the song. Because why not? Issue 8 was also a shell script that was actually demonstrating the encryption provided in one of the articles. It's getting harder and harder to explain. <laughs> issue nine was, so it was the one about the Super Nintendo uh, hack via controller. So there was this big article explaining the whole hack. And you can actually use the issue on the on emulator or on the real Super Nintendo to exploit the game in the cartridge, the Game Boy game, to exploit the Game Boy, to exploit, the, to take over the Super Nintendo, and then the final payload was actually to display the article. So you have a screen of the article on the emulator or on the real system. Issue 10, issue 11 was a, a Ruby web server. So basically it did, doesn't need its own mirror, it can serve itself. So it's, and it's self-aware because it would pass its own zip in, and then it would en uh, enable people to directly download its own internal files. So it's parsing itself to serve its own content to outside and we tested it, it works, of course. And issue 12 is an Android APK so that you can, it, the file can view itself but it can also share itself over NFC. So it's uh, there. There might be extra stuff in the file because why not? We include a kind of a lot of crazy things in the PDF. As you can see, we have fun manipulating it all kinds of ways. So if you find something weird in the file, maybe it's not entirely coincidental. But compatibility is critical. We don't try to just uh, implement a hack and then it works, and then it works, and then it's uh, there and. Um, um, so we, we test it, we actually want to, that it works on many systems. Uh, the problem is that Adobe Reader blacklists many formats, so you cannot do an ELF PDF. It will be uh, blacklisted by Adobe and we, we don't want to do that. We don't want this uh, incompatibility. And sometimes by creating crazy structures, we would have crazy results. So here, for no reason, the file was still open, but the first images would disappear uh, when we were actually merging the PDF and the ISO with the flash inside. For no re some reason, the, P the PDF was still opening under some readers, but the first images 
the first image was disappearing. So what we did was insert a one pixel picture at the, be at the beginning of the document so that it would be sacrificed by the reader and all the pictures would be displayed. And um, another problem we have, permanent problem we have, is that in the fillies we sometimes put a PDF and zip compression is not so good. So even if it's compressed, the, the compressed PDF might still output some PDF keywords which will uh, fuck the, um, the parsing of the outer PDF. So we actually, in our QA process, we actually have something to check that it's not a problem. So again, not all secrets have been found. So any weird pattern is purely coincidental. The conclusion, my conclusion on Poker GTF4 first is that I'm convinced that it helped to share research of some people. Not all the articles are so as good as the others, but definitely there were some initial content that were extremely bad initially. None of this fancy stuff is required for hacker publication, but the important thing is that we keep trying in making it better, and by keeping trying on making it better for the radio people, for the uh, kernel exploit people, for all this kind of different hacker mentality, we get better uh, workflow, whether we get new tools to integrate the PDF and so on, or to manipulate uh, the data that we are provided. And by doing so, I intend in, in, uh, eventually to actually publish the results of how to, then we know how we can help the radio people publishing better articles, how we can publish, uh, help the gaming people to publish better articles and so on. So my current plan for uh, this year is actually focusing on just making Poker GTA for better in any ways. I mean, in a, uh, any ways that I find suitable. And next year, I will then start publishing methods and tools and say advice for this uh, community, this category of people, and say it's not so hard once you know the trees, once you know the right tool, and so on. So please provide feedback. Please submit whatever you have in mind, and we'll try to come up, the, to come up with the best things. Uh, Poker G, the Poker GTA 4 Bible should be published soon, soonish, by Nostarch. So it will become a physical book uh, that will be for sale. But ultimately, it's not really about Poker GTA 4. I let you decide, I'm biased obviously, whether Poker GTA 4 is good or not. But that's not the point here. The only thing that is the, mo the most important thing is that I, for me is that we are exploring better ways to share knowledge. I can only try the ones I can come up with, and so do you. And we need more people trying to share new ways to share knowledge and not stay standardized. So whether it's Pix, Pixie, oh, wrong, <laughs> I switched letters, or Poker GTFO, I mean maybe one of you will come up with something much better, and I welcome that. So I think trying is more important than just saying this is good or this is bad. So a few thank you. And if you have any questions. So I think it is uh, the microphone for the question. So first question. <laughs> Somebody has a, a question for Ange? Do not be shy. Are you play? <laughs> Hello. Okay. Are you planning? Uh, no, no. Are you planning a polyglot version like Italian, French, uh, English of uh, Poc GTFO? French English? Yes. Uh, if it was me, it would, I would, sorry? Multilingual? Yeah, if it was me, it wouldn't limit myself to French, so be careful. But uh, at least at first I will try to finish the ebook version. I think that's more valuable. Especially uh, with the French, uh, we are not so good. There is a French charade in that one, by the way. So you can try. Yeah, this one is published in Montreal, so it has some French. The second article is called Lisez-moi. We've got time, so one more question? Or more? Or more, of course. Yeah. So, uh, What's the main difference with uh, other uh, design that exists, like FRAC or something like that? What's uh, your goal to be different? Uh... Well, FRAC is good in, in its own way, but uh, 
I'm not sure it brings something back to the author. They are published in FRAC, but uh, w very often we, we bring back the diagrams. People are like f free to reopen them. Or uh, sometimes it's, uh, I think it's more like just with int interesting for the author, but not necessarily uh, so by the, the, the flow of interest is not the same, I think. I mean, something like FRAC is awesome or two, and other ways are awesome, but it's just, uh, they are not nothing graphical, and sometimes, so the problem with FRAC is that by staying obscure, you don't necessarily communicate more, and then it will give more value to the people having a shiny logo, I think. While saying, this is not so hard to make your own research a bit more understandable, is better for every person rather than the shiny logos, and on the other hand, the, op the obscure style of ASCII. Even though, I'm, uh, to make it uh, ebook compatible, I'm also thinking of making a text version of it. But of course, we lo lose a lot of information. Yeah. The mirror. Um, just wanted to say that your website is not working at the moment. It's redirecting to Google and it's a 404 error. So you may need to update it. Which website? Oh, mine. This one. Yeah, yeah. I'm focusing on Pop GTF4, so I, I, I left it for a, a, a year or two. Okay. Thanks. It's getting dangerous. Yes. Last one? Just to fly, of course. Not only for the question. So throw it randomly. <laughs> yes, maybe. <laughs> hey, he's watching Twitter. He did it. <laughs> of course. You say. <laughs> no? Oh, come on. Yeah. So which version do you send to the publisher? The one with the payloads inside or a safer one? Um, so first, a safer one. You. Uh, um, f and also we sometimes we send a, an alternate version that is direct for printing so it's like a, a book layout and everything and also very often we have to finish the QA of the polyglot and the typos so it's all uh, it's not necessarily for security reason some of the issues are perfectly standard PDF I mean the TrueCrypt one from a PDF perspective it's fully standard from a TrueCrypt per perspective it's not so standard but at least the, the, the how do you say the a printer company would, wouldn't see anything. And uh, by the way, my own, uh, the resume I sent is uh, also a polyglot. So, so I was, uh, I was hired and the same, I was asked, they asked, were asking for a PDF expert. And I sent a Super Nintendo Mega Drive PDF file and I was hired. So HR didn't check that Sega was written at offset 100. Stupid. Okay. So to be fair, on this time. No question. No. <laughs> oh, come on. Do not be shy. Julien, PC, one question? Yeah. So should I tell all my developers to never open your PDFs? Well, PDF has a lot of disadvantage, but it's also not bad. So yes, you can have a lot of, uh, we you can have a functional OS in PDF and so on. So yes, it's very flexible in terms of parsing. So you can do a lot of hacks. Last one? So thank you very much, Hans.